Today we're gonna to talk about grinding from a pitted piece of metal to a polished piece of metal and how to get there as quickly as possible. So as you may know, my shop is sponsored by Ferret Abrasives. I've done a lot of videos showing their consumables and their abrasives, and really, I use their stuff before they started working with me because it got me to where I needed to go the fastest. Now, one of the comments and kind of criticisms I get when I share their products is that typically their products are sold in a quantity that's kind of large and it can be a little daunting for someone to purchase them if they're not familiar with the products. Well, I've been talking with Ferret a lot and since then they've developed kind of smaller packs of their products. So a little bit easier for people to try stuff out. Today, I'm gonna to show you two of them. We have a grinding and a finishing pack that use their combi click system. And I'm gonna show you how quickly I was able to go from this pitted piece of metal to this polished piece of metal in just a matter of minutes. Okay, so today I've got two new grinding combi click kits from Faird. Uh, we've got a grinding and a finishing. Now, the combi click system uses a backing pad and this sort of bayonet locking ring on the back of the grinding discs to make swapping out discs fast and also to give you a lot of abrasive to use without having to worry about a hub or a bolt, uh, you know, traditionally you'd have a big hub there or a big nut there that would kind of limit the amount of abrasive you could use. Anyway, what we're gonna do today, make this example quick and simple, is we're going to take this very pitted piece of 3 8 plate and we're gonna use the grinding set to get it to basically a uniform finish. And then we're gonna use the finishing set to essentially polish it. You can see how quickly we can run through these abrasives uh, and get this thing looking nice and you can imagine the different applications you could use this for. So before I get into those boxes, I wanna talk a little bit about the type of angle grinder I'm using. Now this is a variable speed angle grinder and this is really important for good finish work with your angle grinder. I've talked about these in other videos. Uh, this one is from Milwaukee. This one does 2,800 RPMs up to 11,000. It doesn't need to be a Milwaukee grinder, but a corded um, variable speed grinder for me has yielded the best results. I also really like their cordless variable speed angle grinder, but it doesn't go as slow as the corded one. And obviously the corded one will kind of go on forever, but it is also a great tool for a, a little faster finishing pass. I'll put links down in the description to these grinders and also some less expensive variable speed grinders. And you're definitely gonna want that if you wanna get into a high level finish with any metal. So because this has been sitting outside and the pitting and rust is pretty bad, I've got this 80 grit CO Cool, which came out of the grinding set before we go into the finishing, but they both use the same backing pad. The backing pad is this rubber pad. And like I said, there's kind of like a bayonet style click mount. You can see it here in this hub. And essentially you just put the pad on and give it a quick kind of little press in the center and a little rotation and it'll lock in just like that, and now this is good to go. So let's cut the 80 grit on here. We're gonna do half the piece so you can see the before and after. So you can see I'm able to push the grinder really flat because there's no hub because of the design of this. So now that I've got this down, I've got the, the mill scale and the pitting off of this, I can go into the finishing kit and I can bring this thing up to what'll be a nice, pretty much polished look. So the finishing kit goes 120, 220. There's doubles of each of them. And we're gonna go up. We're gonna start at the 120 and work our way up, up to a unitizing finish. And this is gonna go fast. So what I'm looking for in between grits is to try to get out any of the very deep scratches using the next grit. So I just went, did the 120, switching to the 220. You can see how that just locks right in. So now we're gonna move up from the 220 to a surface conditioning. This is a 180 surface conditioning. And I'm bringing the speed down a little bit on the grinder. I was already running a little bit below top speed, but I'm gonna go down to like a three out of six.
So the last step on this is a unitizing disc. Now I did a whole video about these. These are great for, you know, it's almost a polished finish. I mean, there's no compound, but uh, it's gonna be a really bright finish and very, very smooth. Great for that kind of cleanup. Uh, there's kind of some weird haze in this, but this will take it out. So this, I'm gonna bring my grinding disc, my grinder speed down pretty much all the way because uh, I don't want to burn this out going too fast. And that is beautiful. So you can see there's a little bit of polish to it. You can see the reflection of the backside of my glove. It's not what I would call a mirror polish by any means, but certainly a clean and nice finish from that unitizing disc and then this just pops right off and you can keep moving. For a little more practical an application, here we've got somebody's practice weld that I found in the scrap bin at my shop. And we're gonna grind down this corner, take this weld down, clean up this corner right here, see how it looks. Starting again with the 80 grit. Eighty grit, one twenty. Two twenty. Surface conditioning grit. Turn the speed down. Now, personally, I love the look of a brushed steel finish, but we're gonna take it up one more step with that unitizing disc and just finish off this corner. So now I've got a really nice welded, blended corner little bit of porosity in the weld there, but that's a welding problem, not a grinding problem. You can see the little bit of reflection in my gloves to see how finished it is. It's very, very smooth. And that was really, really easy. There's plenty of life left in all those discs. And all I did was use the, uh, I did use the 180 grit from the grinding kit, but mostly that's a finishing pass. So quick little demo on how you can use these products. And really what these are is kind of like a sample pack you can get these and then if you find one or two of the discs work really well for you, then you can just buy those separately. And since you get the backing pad in with these, you don't have to repurchase that. Uh, they do make different hardnesses of the backing pads. And I have like a soft one, a medium one, and a hard one. And the difference uh, can be pretty significant if you're trying to get that sort of look. Now this is sort of a specialty process if you're not really doing any blending uh, or finishing in this level. You might not need this stuff, but I really do like the grinding discs themselves just for bringing down welds and stuff like that. You saw how quickly the 80 grit brought down that welded corner and made it super, super nice. Now, if you're gonna paint, you don't really wanna bring your material to this high of a polish because you want that paint to have a little bit of tooth, which is why often you see people shot blast or sand blast up before painting. But if you're going for a polished or let's call it shiny look, this will get you there really quickly. The other key is having a variable speed angle grinder, which I've talked about a lot, and I'll throw some links down below. So if you go into the description of this video, you'll find links on where you can get these. Um, these kits are new to the market and they are a great way to get into their system and try out 
some of the different products. Like I said, they've worked out great for me. And I'm also gonna be giving away a set of these with Faird over on my Instagram, which you can check out right here, at Make Everything Shop. If you don't wanna get it on the giveaway, just follow me anyway, at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. I hope to see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope you like to learn about processes and consumables that I use in my shop and that might help you in your shop. If you do, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.